Colby likes to ask questions. He's determined to find the answers. I like to ask why a lot. The one question I can't answer for him yet is why he was born with cerebral palsy. I knew he was going to be challenged in life after receiving the diagnosis, but I was not prepared for the constant battles we faced to get the services and supports he would need. To see how much he has already overcome speaks directly to his determination and perseverance to seek solutions. I like to rain bid. After an end of the year band concert in high school, the seniors were recognized for their accomplishments and announced their upcoming plans to attend college. Each senior proudly announced the name of the college they had chosen. So of course on the way home, Colby asked, Where am I going to call this? And that was a question I was not prepared to answer. So with a knot in my chest, I said, I'm not sure yet, but we can look at some online, okay? We learned about Think College programs and all of a sudden a whole new world of possibilities had opened up for Colby that we had no idea even existed. I can do this. Colby started talking about college in his IEP team meetings and they listened and it wasn't easy at first because the more we learned about these programs, we realized there were certain criteria to meet for acceptance. And one of those was that Colby needed to remain his own guardian. Some programs required it and some preferred it. That's when we learned about a new phrase called the school to guardianship pipeline. Many schools unintentionally steer students like Colby to seek out guardianship when it's not necessary. I know I can choose for myself. I don't need a guardian. The advice was well-intentioned, but if we had taken it and become Colby's legal guardians, he would not be where he is today. Now he's in college and about to graduate. In college, I have mentors and friends who help me with different things. Colby lives an hour away from home on his own now, and we quickly realized he deserves this level of independence, and that if it's going to continue, we will have to step back and let go more every day. That is really hard for me. So I do what most moms do when we get scared or unsure and we just want to protect our kids. I went into detective mode. I went online. I did some research. I reached out to other moms who've been there, done that with this age and stage. But that's when I learned about something called the supportive decision-making model. And in my research, the Alabama Council for Developmental Disabilities introduced us to something called charting the life course tools. I shared this information with Colby and he liked it too. So we put these two ideas together and created Colby's Dream Team. I love my Dream Team. We have some amazing people contributing to Colby's Dream Team. They are all experts at what they do and mutual friends who know Colby pretty well. The value of building relationships outside of a network of paid supports has been vital for Colby's success. With more natural supports comes more independence. The outcomes we've seen from his relationships with these team members create more opportunity for inclusion at an exponential rate. We get by with a little help from our friends, White. One very important relationship we've built through the years is with Alabama's Disability and Advocacy Program, or ADAP. Our friends at ADAP know the long history of the fight for rights for people with disabilities. ADAP works closely with our courts on issues related to guardianship in Alabama. Everything Colby is doing right now is making a huge difference for guardianship reform. I'm incredibly proud of Colby and I know he's paving the way for many more to come. I know a big part of the answer to his why is to keep asking others, why not? Let make the Colby at happen. Help us rain, rain team to Alabama.